Here we are at IoT World Silicon Valley. Joining me today is Sean Canale, Senior Analyst with Omdia, welcome. Thanks for having me, Chuck. So connected cars, that's your thing. Tell me about connected cars these days. Well, connected cars have actually been around a while. Uh, if we think back to 1996, when the world was still on analog networks, OnStar launched. You know, this was before most people had cellular phones, and even those who did use them fairly seldomly and only for business because rates were so expensive. Uh, since then, we've advanced through 2G cars, 3G cars, cars with LTE, and now we're finally starting to see the 5G connected car. So do people realize that these cars are connected? So initially, many people only realized their car was connected when they were in a crash, and the car made a call out to emergency services to deliver ambulances and other um, life-saving services. Uh, now it's really moved to much more daily relevant features such as in-vehicle Wi-Fi. I assume that many of the consumers buying the first cars with 5G will be very aware that they are buying, that they are early adopters and buying vehicles with 5G connectivity. So are people paying for this in their cars? They are and they aren't, or they are and they aren't aware of it in some cases. Uh, oftentimes a connected car will come with a free trial, so you might get a year or two years. Uh, in some cases with some premium brands, features uh, such as automatic crash notification will be given for the life of the vehicle. Tesla initially started with their connected services. Those were all built into the price of the vehicle. Now, as we move to other features, such as being able to turn your vehicle into a Wi-Fi hotspot, there often is uh, an aspect where the consumer will be expected to pay after a trial period. Uh, some of the carriers have been very creative in bundling this, where you can add your car as another device to your pool of data. So effectively, your car is like another cell phone on your family plan, where you're consuming data from it at a reduced cost. So in terms of 5G, how fast does that really come? So it all depends. Again, 5, 5G is really, right now, not fully developed. We're still in the early stages of 5G networks, especially, and, and in some, some markets don't even have 5G yet, we, we must be aware of. Some, some markets are, or some places re really don't even have full LTE coverage. But as far as 5G is a standard, and as far as it applies to the, the car, we still really are in early days. Um, if, if you think that a car is often moving at 60 miles an hour, the technology within 5G is planning on being developed, but it isn't here yet where the car can be hand off from tower to tower and have a seamless 5G experience on something like Wi-Fi. So cars take basically a long time. They're, they're years ahead in terms of what they're developing and building. Um, are they looking at, at three or four years down the road? What, any idea of what that looks like? So, so there, I, I mean, the car makers are, are really looking at probably close to 10 years down the road. They know that the early vehicles with 5G won't be able to do everything that 5G has and will eventually do, but this is really a matter of future-proofing the car. You get the 5G modem in there, and as this 5G standard develops, you can update some of the firmware and the software in the vehicle to reflect the new in, uh, capabilities of 5G. So if, if you think of a consumer you know, having a car on the road for 10, possibly 15 years, maybe even changing owners, having a 5G modem gives you the bandwidth to do some fairly robust updates with, uh, to the vehicle's software. Vehicles are increasingly being defined more by their software rather than the hardware, especially we, as we move to electric vehicles, which are you know, really, really more like computers on wheels. So you know, a consumer that, that purchases a 5G vehicle now will still have um, the car manufacturer will be able to deliver updates to the vehicle to change things like the suspension, to change things like the advanced driver assistance system. So if you think of um, um, forward collision warning, uh, advanced cruise control, as we're moving to autonomous driving, a lot of that's going to be software defined and the ability of the OEM, the GM, the Toyota, the Ford, the BMW, to push updates over the air to the vehicle is incredibly powerful not just to keep the vehicle relevant, but also for measures such as um, controlling for defects. It's very costly when there is a recall in a vehicle 
and the consumer then is inconvenienced, has to bring the vehicle into the dealership. The dealership then bills the OEM, you know, potentially hundreds of dollars, potentially thousands of dollars, um, when perhaps a software patch could fix that warranty call, recall and save a considerable amount of cost. Right. Um, do you see any integration, uh, at least in the foreseeable future, with smart cars, smart cities, smart buildings, smart home? Very much so. Uh, you, you know, there are a number of companies on, including Qualcomm, that are really spanning the connected car, as well as really the connected ecosystem, so working with smart parking companies, smart uh, lighting companies, particularly traffic lights, understanding that vehicles will need to communicate with each other if we're going to move to a more autonomous driving um, environment. So yes, there, there is definitely the need for what we call vehicle to X or vehicle to anything communication where a car will need to talk to potentially pedestrians. The car will need to be aware of what is going on at a busy intersection. Um, we, we are still in stages where most of this is really proof of concept as these are mission critical features. You can't go to market with a system that's almost there and you, you know be okay with ca pedestrian casualty or, or even property damage or, or injury to the driver. The, these are really systems that have to be locked down in terms of how they operate and also the security aspect as well. You can't have a connected car be compromised by a bad actor who is able to uh, enter the vehicle remotely through its connectivity. So a year from now, if we're sitting here, what will we be talking about? Oh, I think we'll still be talking about 5G and the connected <laughs> car. It's really just going to be arriving in North America. Uh, regionally, China is actually a bit ahead of us, uh, both in terms of the, the infrastructure rollout of 5G, but also uh, a number of their domestic brands, ones that wouldn't necessarily be familiar to consumers in the US or Europe, have already started rolling out 5G. Uh, GM actually will roll out 5G connectivity in China, in Buicks and Cadillacs, before it's actually rolled out in the US. Well, I look forward to the next year. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Chuck. Thank you.